Hello all, I'm Officer James Holmes, Public Information Officer for the Phoenix Police Department. Today is October 26, 2013, and it's Make a Difference Day. Early this morning, we started out out here at 47th Street in Rozier to make a difference for a 71-year-old man who has a passion for collecting items. He has a passion for his Zen Rock Garden, and unfortunately, the collectible part of that passion has caused him a few problems here with the city of Phoenix. Today you're going to meet several people. You're going to meet Mr. Huang Nguyen, 71 year old uh, Vietnam prisoner of war and migrant to the United States of America. You're going to meet folks from Angels on Patrol, voluntary organization here in Phoenix that is sponsored or works with the Phoenix Police Department. You're going to meet volunteers from Wells Fargo. All of the folks that you see on the on the sponsor board behind me have come together to make Mr. Wynn's life better. As we move through this video and we talk about uh, Mr. Wynn and make a difference today, we hope that we encourage everyone that when it's time to give a little bit of your time uh, for a citizen, for a neighbor, that we'll all do just that. Thank you. Thousands and thousands and thousands of items cover the South Phoenix home inside and out. Compressed papers, books, bottles, cans, and rocks fill every square foot. And in the front yard, an exquisite Zen rock garden with hundreds of handmade sculptures, all sizes and shapes, all unique. The owner, 71-year-old Wang Wing, has been living here for more than 30 years. His obsession with collecting has become so serious that the city says he must clean up or be fined thousands of dollars and face jail time. He's a refugee from Vietnam. Fortunately, officers from the Phoenix Police Department, members of Angels on Patrol, volunteers from businesses and civic groups, and neighbors have teamed up to help out. Everyone's pitching in to make a difference in this huge volunteer effort. That makes Mr. Wynn happy. I feel very good. You know why? Because the, the people held, I, I feel like I win the lottery. <laughs> he's doing well, which is probably the most important. Um, he's, you know, this could be a really rough day for him. So, yeah, he's excited actually to get this cleaned up. He wants the help. Um, that took a little convincing at first. I think he was rather nervous to let people in, um, let people come to his house. Um, embarrassed, ashamed that it got like this. So we had some other emotional things on his end to overcome before he would even let us in. Um, but myself and another officer, Norma Jean Campbell, um, have known him just from patrolling the area and would stop by and talk to him about his rock garden and his zen and his cactus. and. It just perpetuated from there. He's just somebody you want to help. There's people out there that want to help because sometimes, you know, when you hoard stuff, you probably think that nobody's helping you. That's why you want to keep everything that you have. So by him, by him seeing us out here today, first thing he said to me is like, thank you. He's shaking my hand. He's telling me he's 71. I said, no, you're 17. He said, ah, it's so funny. But he's a good guy, and he says he's getting a lot of friends by just this helping hand that we're doing. So now he has another friend, me, TJ. Mr. Nguyen came here after living in a Vietnamese prison camp. He was forced to leave behind his wife and children. The hoarding conditions he currently has been living in are very serious. This is one of the worst I've had for exterior, uh, and the city only required that the inside, I'm sorry, the city only required that the outside be done, but we, uh, we have to take care of the inside too, because that's where he's got to live. So we're going to try to do the inside and outside both, but it's pretty bad, it's pretty compact. We had to actually pull the wall down to uh, get into it. Having spent six years in a communist prison, um, every little piece of treasure you find is significant and has value, so this is probably a lot of, you know, lingering consequences from his time. We're actually hoping to accomplish just getting him cleaned up enough so he doesn't get the fines and the fees from the city and so he can get counseling and get, you know, get his life back to something he can manage again. Experts say this job should take about two weeks, but volunteers will be completing this project in about two days. And when it's all said and done, more than 80,000 tons of debris will be moved.
volunteers have spent more than 30 hours and this cleanup still isn't finished. Police officers, angels on patrol, and local supporters say they're committed to helping Mr. Wynn complete this.